Good morning to you all. Thank you very much for being here today. And we were saying uh, before organizing such an international seminar always comes with full of uh, nerves and stress, but great hopes. Uh, as the vice rector said, uh, seeing the Aula Magna, this great room full, uh, which doesn't happen often. So this is really, really uh, satisfactory. It's wonderful, you know, having uh, such an, an interested audience. And the second great aspect is having the pleasure of counting on such a wonderful panel of experts who've come voluntarily and happy to, to come and participate today. If you have a look at today's agenda, you will be aware of the quality of our experts with other, the closing remarks by our young researchers at the UB here today, youngsters who've decided to devote their research on the international brigades. So let's get started with the opening keynote. It's a great honor to have uh, Remy Skutelski. He's a French historian who's specialize, who specializes on the Spanish Civil War from a sort of social history viewpoint. He is a research fellow at the Paris 1 uh, University, and he's written many books. Uh, some of which are, for example, Novedad en el Frente, or Novelty at the Front, who was very, very special um, on this, uh, on this uh, sector, not only for the quality of his research, but also of the great quality of the archives he managed to, to get hand of, like the Moscow ar archives because thanks to his research, we could know many data on the figures and origin of all the volunteers who came to fight against fascism. And also, we had more social information on their behavior, on their characteristics as, as human beings. So, uh, Mr. Professor Skutelski, you have the floor. Um, after having received this uh, great um, invitation, I was wondering how I could, um, you know, um, how I could uh, do this, because for the last 15 years I haven't done it, uh, you know, I haven't researched on the international brigades. I'm not at uni, so I went back to my past job. So I will to be talking to you about the memory of the international brigades in, Fran in French on the turn of the century and currently. And it's really, it depends on you to decide whether this comes, uh, if, if, if it's parallel to what was happening in Spain, in Catalonia, or in other countries. First thing, it's it's usually done to separate collective memory and history, the first one being a, a unifying factor of a group in part of its identity based in places, uh, celebrations, etc. It belongs to people who compare, uh, sorry, who share this idea to what's sacred. The second, it pretends to be universal. It doesn't know the holiness of its nature, and it uses scientific methods. However, in today's topic, unfortunately, separating this is not that easy, because militant history, as we will see, is very, very present today indeed. The issue of the memory of the brigade in France can be thought of these sort of uh, sad lines by José Fort, a son of the the brigadier uh, and journalist at the L'Humanité, the uh, newspaper of the Communist Party. And I read, thousands of brigadists were killed for the first time by Franco um, militaries, and it's Mussolini, Hitler, and French fa fascist allies. After Vichy and Berlin, and Berlin, 
and a third uh, by Stalin and their associates. Then they were marginalized, even forgotten about because of the, the forgetness or indifference by the Western public authorities, which denied them the condition of veterans because of the exclusion that they were often suffering because they were being too critical about too many things. The exclusion also needs to be understood in both senses of this term, marginalization and being uh, expelled from the party. If we cannot establish or state that the veterans in Spain were as such eliminated or deleted from the major um, ruling positions of the party, it's true that the party forgot about them for, me for a long time. All testimonies agree. Why? The heroes of liberation are uh, of France, of course, the La Résistance fighters. And actually, also the first lo lost, the second one. And uh, Franco's fall after Hitler and Mussolini could have given back the Spanish veterans to the first uh, highlight of memory. For, um, Hiding the great success of the Brigade Internationals by the Résistance is then a phenomenon which goes far beyond the French Communist Party framework. But this contributes to this uh, hiding or uh, f this forgetting. Uh, in the post-war, the party has its legitimacy in its role in the Résistance and it it reinforces its nationalist discourse. The veterans in Spain, the veteran symbol of the internationalist struggle are not thus a very important issue. Then the Iron Curtain falls and the break or rupture between Stalin and Tito happens. However, the veterans of Spain fought hand by hand with the Americans and the um, Yugoslavians. Many of uh, many of these people in the West paid uh, with their own lives because of other reasons also. We can talk about it in detail afterwards. In the West, in France, I'm not sure whether you say they smell sulfur. No, no, they, they see the, the evil. Uh, they saw the dark side of things, or even though their undeniable loyalty to Stalin, independently from the Cold War. According to several historians, and I am one of them, there are two types of legitimacy in the party, according to the time or uh, the context. In times of political struggle, absolute loyalty to the line, to the leaders and the Soviet Union is the basic quality. We do not pretend to accept responsibilities. We are identified, chosen and promoted. In times of armed struggle, be it in the international brigades or the resistance, we, all the qualities are needed, being a volunteer, autonomous, having initiative and being brave. And when peace goes, comes back, these qualities of those who fought become problems. Those who had proved to be brave, they become suspects. Away from the Communist Party, there are not much interest on the brigades, according to the debility or weakness of production of all time, taking or under, understanding them as an object. In the 70s, uh, Jacques delperry Bayac, a journalist, wrote a very serious piece of a work on uh, the Spanish uh, Civil War and uh, Spanish history. And 20 years afterwards, it was uh, he did a master in history. Um, also, a, a TV series, which um, then became a script. Uh, the most important one being the Phalanges of the Black Order, which was a sort of satirical 
cartoon by en Enki Bilal, which represents former brigadists as heroes. Several elements contribute to, for the international brigades to, go, to occupy again on the first arena during the 1990s. Some are half international nature and international scope, other are Franco-French. Franco the first one being with historical consequences, because the archive, the archive in Moscow was opened in 1991-1992. In fact, uh, the administration in Albacete, a rural little town in Spain, opened tons of documents which had been sent to the former Soviet Union in 1939, and afterwards they were sent to the former Max Engels Institute. The second one being 1993, when an amendment was uh, passed um, and suggested by a socialist politician who wanted to give the veteran uh, ID or veteran card to the former volunteers. And then it was very controversial, the fact that the historian Annie Kriegel wrote a very hostile article public in Le Figaro, where she honored um, and, and rendered honor to Franco, and she was denying the brigadist the right to wore the title of the first combatants of the resistance, because it was uh, the armed uh, side of the People's Commissionat for International Affairs, the NKVD. As a con consequence of the evolution of the Communist Party related to the fall of the Berlin Wall, the French Communist Party suggested that former brigadists had a plague in the PCF, and uh, the ASER, the Association of Friends and Sons of Brigadists, was founded. So it was wanted to gather again in Moscow a copy of the biographical archives of the French volunteers and give them to a totally independent institution by the Communist Party, the BDIC, the um, Library of the Contemporary Research, um, the BDIC. After the 60th anniversary of the creation of the brigades, Fra French, uh, sorry, France gave finally the ex-volunteers the uh, veteran status, while the Cortes, the one of the, the governments in Madrid, approved and passed by unanimity a law which gave them Spanish honor uh, nationality. Ken Loach, Land in Freedom, his film, uh, had a great success, both here, also in, in France. And paradox, it's a paradox, because this film, which mentions very slightly the international brigades, it awoke a renewed interest to them. Being so that some students began to work at the university on this subject in France after seeing Ken Loach's film. Thus, we can illustrate the evolution of the communist memory towards Henri Rol Tangu. He was a permanent communist syndicalist. Henri Tungui won Spain in 1937, and he became a political commissar in, uh, in uh, the 14th uh, International Brigade, the Marseillaise. Under the occupation, he uh, took very important responsibility roles in the resistance, especially after his Spanish experience. And his last charge was the chief of staff of the French forces, the interior French forces in the Ile-de-France, um, the metropolitan area around Paris, under the, the also known as Roll, which was um, a comrade who was killed in Spain. Uh, afterwards, he was extra officially, and then officially was a member of the Central Committee of the party. And when the military and political leaders of the communist resistance were killed or expelled by the uh, management, by the party management, Rol Tangu became this really um, well-known or emblematic figure of the communist resistance. In the 1990s, the the Spanish past by Rol Tengu can be highlighted because not only he is the incarnation of the resistance, 
the excluded had been re-accepted or rehabilitated, but also the continuity between the war in Spain and the resistance. In a very symbolic way, its last public uh, apparition will be in the inauguration event on the International Brigade's Acer of the BDIC. It was also in the 1980s when the Black Book of Communism was published, which included scientific articles, but also propaganda um, papers. Um, in the biggest sense of the word. The um, idea was to reduce communism to a criminal enterprise, but ignoring all the pieces that would not fit with this analytical framework. The best example of this approach is the chapter on Spain. Mistakes and approaches are changed, and the international brigades um, are explained, but only through the 500 people who were killed by André Martí, a legend, and I'm not the only histori um, historic expert that has proven that. Um, in Stalin and the Revolution, the Spanish uh, case, Pierre Brure also denounced the policies of the dictator in Spain. Um, but uh, he also took the um, articles from Brunette Beloten who, that were not translated into Spanish. As a matter of fact, the international brigades, according to him, um, and also according to Annie Kriegel, were not the armed part of NKVD, but they were the deviation by Moscow of a movement uh, of, by a spontaneous part of the uh, army in the Comintern. Therefore, it was in 1990 when I published the results of my own research. I started uh, with a sociologic history project. I wanted to understand who went to Spain, why, and what were the things that the um, volunteers had lived. But I was reading the Moscow archives for months. I worked with the organization of the brigades, and my conclusions, the conclusions I drew, were totally opposed, totally contrary to Brue's conclusions. And I will now. Um, elaborate on them. Stalinism, which was a murderous poli um, policy system and a politician system, was already ruling the, inter the international communism in 1936. The trials in Moscow started a terror wave that, in regarding to uh, foreigners, was purging the staff at Comintern and also led to the dissolution of the, po of the policy. Party. The role of the, of, the co of the Communist International in the International Brigades is, of course, well understood. Also, the rise of communists in the Republic. We also know that several activists living in Spain have been prosecuted and sometimes killed. Nonetheless, when we forget about rumors, the testimonies of witnesses, the writings from historians copying one another without checking the sources. If we don't do that, but instead we focus on the real sources, then we can find, and I realize that, that we cannot talk about political repression in the international brigades, except for the case of the national volunteers from the party that was almost uh, forbidden in Moscow, particularly in Poland and, Hungar and the Hungarian parties. The question then is, why they did not annihilate or kill the hundreds of people who were not following the disciplines and those who would criticize officials, the top managers, or the lines of the party, deserters, all of them included in an army that was more and more classical. There were three main reasons for that, and I will repeat what I already said a while ago. Let us come back to the time when the brigades were established in autumn 1936. According to all the observers, um, Madrid was about to fall. People thought that the Madrid would fall within weeks and the Republic would follow. It is highly likely that at that time, 
it for Stalin. The idea was to avoid this fall, but especially um, Stalin wanted to highlight the help of the um, com comment. Um, as such, the international brigades have a very important um, symbolic meaning. Due to this reason, um, the political uh, orthodox of these people is still secondary. Against all thoughts that were that had been um, foreseen, Madrid would resist uh, the university city and Harama battles. The real restructuring of the international um, brigades did not start until 1937. But the promotion of men because of their merits and not loyalty was already there. We will never completely change that, despite the climate of internal suspicion, the fear of spies. Um, that was uh, this manifestation of Stalinism, and that was worse and here by the military defeats. Why? Because the international brigades, a true army, with all the burdens that it entails, are, were formed by volunteers. The managers, the Stalinist managers, must deal with thousands of brigades who are not, and special officials and soldiers who are facing the terrible fight are not propaganda um, disseminators or are not leaders of the strike. There's a second reason, too. For Moscow, the international brigades are especially a tool for propaganda for the strategy of, of people's fronts or popular fronts. And this was so from the very beginning. It's an international popular front with um, in arm in arm fighting. Um, in terms of displacement, the same rules, but, but in international soil, you cannot apply the same rules as in your own. Um, country. And finally, there is a last reason that goes beyond the brigades. This is all happening in Spain, not in the former Soviet Union. And contrary to all the things that have been written, Soviets cannot do what they can in Spain at the time, and they cannot do what they, what they, can, what they want in Catalonia either. These conclusions had not been, had not been challenged until now, or to date by all historic experts. However, sometimes there are surprises. In this way, in 2012, there was a book launched from the United States on the Cold War. And this book, um, after a long time, it, re it reached French. According to well, this book includes the memories of Sigmund Stein, a veteran Jew of the International Brigades, and was published in the anti-communist the Jihadist Press um, in, the, in, the, in the 1960s. This book was translated into French and caused a uh, media uh, problem, because then Sigmund Stein was, in 1936, a propaganda official of Virovitsan. Um, he was shocked by the Moscow trial, so he wanted to leave towards Spain, despite his willingness to go to the front, to, to go to the um, fighting. He was uh, sent to Albacete at the settlement. At the end of his trip, he managed to spend some weeks in the Bodwin um, company. Company. In Albacete, he could see nothing of the battle. And sometimes when he sees it, he sees it from the very far distance because he sees Martis precisely at the time when the chief of the brigades is in Moscow. So he sees nothing, but he gets bored. And therefore, he is starting to get all type of gossips, all type of gossip from this witness. To read it, according to this, the international brigades have a mafia within it. Terror is um, 
prevailing against all types of dissidents. The murderers are counted by full brigades. This is a hobby of Marti. The orgies include brigade officers, but also Spanish prostitutes and foreign volunteers. In a nutshell, this is just another type of the far right wing propaganda of the 1930s. This book is also um, was fashioned by a historian, French historian, that wonders whether Stein is not exaggerating, but he finally draws the conclusion that he is not. With Stalinists, everything is possible. And if it's possible, that means that it, it did happen indeed. There is also an article by Edouard Seal and Christian Bouven, and that explains the story on this book. Um, online, if you wish, I can give you the website and you can check it. Two years ago, Patrick Rodman managed a documentary film called La Tragedie de Brigade Internationale that was based on some archive images from the past. Michel Lefebvre, who is a journalist at the newspaper Le Monde, um, he's an author of several books on the iconography of the Spanish War, one of which um, he published with me, and he wrote the following, and I'm quoting here. There are two ways of speaking about the story of the international brigades. The first one is to describe the units of volunteers that were managed by Stalinist leaders who were wanting just blood and who were shooting their own troops or killing Trotskyists or anarchists, therefore uh, being traitors to the uh, bribe of social repulsion. The second one uh, is to consider these brigades as the ultimate representatives of a commu communist utopia that falls um, victim of the Stalinist night, heroes of the anti-fascist struggle, and the first ones to participate in this episode that is the beginning of the Second, uh, or, or the pre-chapter of the Second World War. Patrick Rodman obviously was doubting between the two, and finally he decided to take the second approach. The International Brigade as a positive myth are regularly called upon because they have a symbolic burden which is still very strong. The term brigade cannot be neutral, is never neutral because it necessarily refers to the international volunteers and to Spain. When several youth movements participated in the reconstruction of Yugoslavia after the Stalin Tito fall in 1949, they called their groups brigades, reconstruction brigades, as a matter of fact. And the War of Bosnia in the 90s was also the perfect timing for these um, pointless calls to reconstruct the international brigades, along with the inhabitants of Sarajevo. We could give other examples outside of France, such as the Solidarity Brigades with Nicaragua in the Sandinist Revolution times. In France, the Spanish Civil War, Civil War is still a reference that nobody can deny. And we could see that with the um, <laughs> with the last Middle, Middle East events. In April 2013, um, Jean-Pierre Filiou, I think this is a Catalan surname, isn't it? No, it's not. Well, Jean-Pierre Filiou, um, historian uh, in the Arab world, he published a paper in Le Monde called, and uh, by the way, I'm going to say that in French, and I hope you understand. Syria is our Spanish war. Syria is our guerra de España. Um, it is the, the beginning is homage to Catalonia from George Orwell, and based on that, it describes the situation of civilians during wartime. Why not? And after that, there is a metaphor that would be funny if facts were not so tragic. The bombing of Aleppo um, are compared with the bombing in Guernica. Russia and Iran nowadays 
are supposed to be compared to the Nazi Germany and the fascist Italy yesterday. The non-intervention of Western democracies in 2011 are as bad for Syrian Democrats as it was for Spaniards in 1936. Of course, in terms of today's um, jihadists, uh, they are compared to the old um, Stalinists with this hierarchy and discipline that can compensate for the ultra minority minoritarian um, personality. The um, support by a foreign um, sponsor gives it a terrible advantage on the local formation that is poorly equipped and the totalitarian project denies the aspirations of freedom as it was with the Spanish people. We want to say, where is the republic in all of this? Jean-Pierre Filiou did not mention the international brigades. Others, though, took the risk, and they did it within another context. After the terrible killings in the Jewish school of Toulouse, Char Charlie Hebdo, the terraces of Parisian cafes, the um, hyper cache shop, and the concert room in Bataclan, committed by French people who had traveled through Syria or Iraq. After Charlie Hebdo, but before Bataclan, the political analyst Laurent Bonelli published in Le Monde Diplomatique a comparison between several external commitments, including the brigadist and jihadist. This comparison expresses, in his opinion, or has, in his opinion, some common mechanisms. And it helps to understand what motivates some people to leave their family, friends behind, but also their working environment, and become engaged in a distant and uncertain course. So, in common, a very powerful ideology, the mediator's role in 1936, the, organize, the workings organization in 2015, its internet, and other common points are the youth. This is not true, actually, for the, for the international brigades. A personal willingness to go out, willing to be adventurous, being available, and when they arrive, uh, linguistic difficulties in situ and the desertion phenomenon. So the conclusion of this very superficial demonstration is, I quote, the systematic analysis of the specific mechanisms under which or by which these individuals have been fighting to produce opposite utopias, utopias sorry, moving the cursor of the moral uh, judgment in the political arena. So, even more interesting is the work by Jean Birmont, responsible of the work uh, section of Le Monde, which was published in January 2016, the title being En silence religieux, uh, this is a religious silence. It's the left attitude uh, in front of jihad, jihadism. What did he say? And I quote, while violence in, on the name of God is constantly in the center of attention, the left seems uh, useless or important to uh, clash or face this phenomenon because in, uh, they believe that religion is often a social symptom only an illusion belonging to the past, never a political force by uh, its own right. In a chapter titled The uh, Hope Now, from the brigades to the um, jihadists, understands that the previous internationalists' movement does not seem to be able to perturbate or worry the world globalization in its capitalist, capitalist form. 
But there is a force that seems to be able to worry it. This force is the political Islam. Nowadays, it's the only ideal under which masses of men and women can actually defy the world order in the five continents. This political Islam seems to be the only cause for which thousands of youngsters are ready to face death on the other side of the world. Today, the idea of international solidarity amongst workers is allowing the idea of global mutual aid amongst the Muslim community. And according to the author, it is to the light of this change that we need to analyze the phenomenon of jihadism. This journalist compares the French jihadists and the French contingent of volunteers which were participating in the international brigades based on the work by um, some French jihadists, the journalist David Thompson, which I haven't read, and mine, on the French who participated in the International Brigade. Differently to the two before-mentioned authors, it's not about finding 100% analogies, but to specify similitudes and differences. And this is not even by entering in or analyzing its events or acts on the field, because uh, let me tell you that this, this week, actually, the International Federation of Human Rights asked this week uh, for French citizens who participated in the persecution of Yazidis in Iraq to be taken to the court and judged. So. Jean Bernmont actually takes a non equivocal or very clear conclusion. The difference between brigadists and jihadists is indeed radical and cannot be denied. His way of proving his argument is even more interesting when he uh, rejects to make any moral dimension judgment. There was 32,000 brigadists, around 20,000 foreign volunteers who participated in Syria, but amongst them, a thousand Frenchmen. Jean Bermond actually talks about sociological differences between these two corpuses. Can characterize the French brigadist as a worker with at least a very little military experience through his experience um, in, in the army. He's around 30 years old, he's single, and indeed, this idea is quite heterogeneous, but in the end, there is no distortion in my writings. The jihadist, which, le which leaves to build the caliphate in Syria, has a sort of not so clear profile. It's not strange, uh, not rare that he comes with his family. He doesn't have any military experience. Um, the average age is around, it gets younger and younger. It's around 22 years old. And these fighters come from a myriad of different social origins. It's quite curious for us the feeling that makes jihadists to take this, uh, to, to actually go to the field, to the war. It's less rage than enthusiasm. Thus, we find the same motivation in both groups. They both want to help their martyr uh, brothers or sisters. The French jihadists are persecuted by images of Syrian children assassinated by Bashar al-Assad's army. And with regards to Syria, Yemen, and the Israeli bombing in Gaza, it highlights the urgent necessity of world solidarity. There is thus a domino effect which can be compared to those commitments and a powerful network of solidarity, uh, even though it is less visible with jihadists. 
So, in the same way as Brigadists saw Spain as the place of the struggle against uh, the capitalist uh, world, the jihadists are convinced that the universal destiny depends on whatever happens to Syria, or rather the Sham, which is the group of countries in the Middle East, uh, Syria, um, Jordan, etc. So, the journalist has highlighted two differences the sociological and the militant culture. Furthermore, there is a third one, living towards Spain in French, is done under the stars, under the sign of collectivity and supervised by a very powerful organization. The Syrian one, however, is individual, improvised and clandestine. So, both brigadists and also jihadists want finally to free men uh, from its state of alienation. And it's precisely where we can talk about this liberation and we need to use the Bourbon formula, I quote, a mortal conflict between two visions of the world, two ideas of mankind. That is, it is the level of the most intimate convictions where the antagonism inhabits. In the revolutionary ideology, taken in its broader sense of the world, the world, the universal socialism will allow no more bourgeois or proletariat, intellectual, uh, both national or foreign, but emancipated or autonomous individuals, both women and men, who have finally emerged from the prehistory of mankind. They have entered history. And in this sense, it is 100% um, coming or drinking from the sources of the Enlightenment ideology. And jihadists also find it really difficult to tolerate division of uh, humanity because they think, jihadists, it is necessary to do this volunteer regression. It's injustice of capitalism and imperialism. They oppose, they don't accept, going back to this uh, sacred origin of the first times of the Islam. I mean, these first times being obviously very sort of fantasized of very ideal. And they begin to break with the West and globally with history. I need to make a slight uh, digression. I need to quote another book. It's the Terreur dans l'Hexagone, uh, the terror or horror in the hexagon. The politologist Gilles Kepel, who's a specialist in Islam and the Arab world uh, currently, he actually dismembers the separatist strategy. He says Salafists in total breakthrough with West may leave France alone to live simply in the integral Islam where in a Muslim world where women can wear the niqab, which is this total cover, which is forbidden now in France. This is a 100% peaceful uh, viewpoint. And, um, and the transition towards violence, when it happens, this is what we're talking about here. It adopts two forms. It combats, it fights weapons uh, with the war battle, which has been happening in, since the 80s, Afghanistan, Bosnia, Pakistan, Iraq and uh, since 2012, Syria and also Iraq. And secondly, a violence mode, i.e. exercising it in the territory of the Kupfers, being uh, impious, non-believers, and according to the Quran expression, blood is licit, i.e. they have the right to kill. The Casmera began this process in France, in France, sorry, and these two forms of violence can be combined. Actually, more jihadists in France began working in Syria. So, 
Being there, we have seen these two logic ideologists, antagonists at the same time, which is no less important than the fact that there exists a volunteer at the Carlemagne Legion, the, S, the French SS, for example, and um, an agent uh, who participated in the international brigades. But there's another one. It's also the totally different dimension. It's the absolute privilege given to the uh, to the future beyond, to paradise, which, which comes with not valuing life. This affirmation is repeated constantly in the Islamist imaginary and literature. Only the liars and cowards love life. The true, the valiants, only wish death. And in Bin Laden's words, which will become the leitmotiv by jihadists, we love death as much as you love life. And Bernmont concludes, and I quote, here the clash between the brigadist and jihadist imaginary is not only a frontal one, but also one that comes from the most inner feelings, from the guts. Because volunteers in Spain went to the war to build conditions for a hundred percent human life. This will also be my conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Remy, for this wonderful speech going through uh, since the very beginning of the first days of the International Brigade coming here to Spain, explaining also the repression which actually happened within the International Brigade organization. And also you've mentioned how the positive myth began towards or with these uh, volunteers, which recently have generated movements with m more or less success, with people participating in foreign uh, conflicts. And you've concluded with this link towards uh, the present moment, identifying these um, similitudes, but also the differences, obviously, between these volunteer people joining uh, the, the Islam cause, the jihadists, I meant. One last word for our audience. We have 10 minutes. I don't know whether you'll have any questions. To link with the last part of your presentation and the conclusions you have drawn, you said that there was this contrast between the international brigades and the idealists uh, in the Muslim conflicts, in the Islam world conflicts. To what extent do you think that the memories of the international brigades fighting in Spain can become an incentive for a movement against the extreme far right wing? Um, and I'm referring to the civil mobilization, to the civil struggle. I believe that the problem, if I'm understanding you right, is how this memory can help to fight. Huh? Well, I'm not optimistic, to be honest. I believe that, I mean, I'm not a specialist, of course, and I'm starting to read some books on jihad and jihadists, but I've read in my book because somebody told me that uh, it was uh, talking about mine, but as a matter of fact, I think that the main characteristic of jihadists going to Syria, these young people, is to have this total frontal rupture, disruption, and I think this is very important. When Biambon explains, and this is a very serious piece of work he did, how to explain that? 
when he says that the history of international brigades, be, of course, belongs to history, but the real disruption of young jihad, jihad, jihadists is a, a also a disruption with history. They want to break that. They don't want they want to forget about the past. In their approaches, they say that they're not interested in history, in politics, they're not interested in anything. They're interested in their own world, their life. So, so no. On the other hand, maybe the same thing happens here, but in France, we say that the key is the Republican school. And I am sure that there is this disruption, but I'm not so sure on some things, because as you know, as a matter of fact, there are two things to be considered here. And it all makes the situation very difficult. Firstly, not all jihadists come from poor backgrounds. And there is a lot of conversion, especially girls, especially in girls who are converted. Who, and, and they can come from a very rich, wealthy background. So, that has to be considered on the one hand. On the other hand, we can also have people with no problems at school. This is why I'm not optimistic. Secondly, we have a real problem in France. This is maybe another difference versus um, international brigades, but in the main propaganda centers for the conversion to the Islam. We do not know how to face that. We don't know how to fight against this. And I truly believe that I may not be answering your questions, but I'm not really optimistic because maybe I'm a little bit of a politician. I speak nonstop without any type of meaning. Right. Sorry about that. Don't worry. Any more questions in the audience? I believe that we should compare the Islam, uh, that, that no comparison should be made between the International Brigades and Islam. The International Brigades came here with their hearts. Um, from the bottom of their hearts, whereas Islam is the hatred towards the republican system to all type of systems that we have settled in the world. So no comparison should be made between both. That's my opinion. I only want to answer this very, very, very briefly. When I read this book from Pierre Bohm, I thought that maybe, look at this, and I'm thinking of communists, revolutionary communists. There is a whole revolution of communists who went to Spain also to have a disruption with the French Republic. They wanted to disrupt and break. I mean, when we talked about social fascism, when we considered democracy, you know, bourgeois democracy as fascism, that happened in the 1930s. Therefore, we can say that this was, in a way, a disruption that was also important with, the, with France at the time. 
But of course, it's not true. This comparison is not true. This is just, um, you know, it's not words that count. It's act that acts that count, and they were revolutionary. But when I was talking about it, it was like a history book from the Third Republic. I mean, even among the strictest communists, there was a very strong republican power that made it that when this was converted into the republic in the 1935, in the past they just were going to polls and elections, but I don't want to quote Lenin here. The most interesting part is that when the communist, the French Communist Party became a part of this republic nation, nationalism in 1935, I believe that for communists who went to the French Republican school, that conversion was super easy, really obvious. And that entails a huge and important difference. Any more questions in the audience? Do we have any more questions? Good. So this will be the last one. It's not a question. It is rather a humble opinion, according to what I've studied on the um, international brigades. I don't think that they only use their hearts, because I'm sure jihadists also use their hearts, in my opinion. The thing is, back then, there was class awareness and there was international organizations that we cannot even dream of. There would have been no brigades without this class awareness, because it was especially against fascism. And it was, of course, communist and trade unionist. But these brigades were organized by the Third International. Where is this international organization nowadays? Nobody can and organize us now, and it's a contradiction because the Stalinist uh, communists, they always are proud of international solidarity, and it is true, and class awareness, but when Spanish anarchists um, think about it, I have been specialized in German uh, international brigade members, and I, of course I'm biased here, but in Germany, they talk about anarchists in a very bad way, with no class awareness awareness, but you're criticizing others, right? So uh, it's a bit of a contradiction. But in any case, class awareness is key, and the availability of big organizations. Where is our class awareness? Where are the big international organizations? Fascism, of course, was really important back then at the time for German activists and Italian activists who have suffered uh, fascism and Nazism in their own, under the skin. The, most of them were in the exile, anyways. But fascism, well, there are many throughout Europe, but still they're fascist, but the enemy is not as clear. And of course, as I said, it all comes down, it all boils down to class awareness and international associations. That this is my opinion. Last question. Good morning. I would just like to remember that I think that the two models, um, of course, in Syria, they're under a confrontation. This is what happens with the Kurdian militia that have received some international support, some volunteers within the Spanish state. Uh, some people have gone to fight in, for women in Kurdistan, for example. So I just wanted to state that and clarify that there are some similarities, but the, there are also some differences, and there, you know, there are two opposing standpoints. Okay, so the very last question now, and then we will close this session and go for the coffee break. I would like to thank our speaker 
for his approach and for these ideas on the French history with regards to the international brigades, because this discussion is non-existent here. We still have a discussion pending on what Stalinism me meant in Catalonia and in Spain. But we need a discussion with no passion in a more serious way. There was a book three published three years ago on the Payolet men and the murderer of Trotsky. But this book did not lead to the necessary discussion and among left wing alternative parties. There's this idea of creating this new um, communist party of the 21st century, but there's always this romantic thought of the communist party in the past, which is really arguable uh, from the democratic point of view. So there are many people who started their struggle, who were linked to Stalinism at the PSUC, and now they keep a, me a romantic memory of it. It, but I really liked your your speech. Uh, it was great food for thought, and I hope that the event today can help us in this critical review that we very much need on the international brigades that escapes from simplification, um, because we have you know a wonderful task ahead of us, which is to build the left wing of the future. But we really need to understand how the totalitarian left wing parties were in the past for that. Okay, so thank you all very much. I would like to read you just five lines that have been sent to us from a Republican Catalan volunteer, Josep Randei Riba, who wanted to handwrite some reflections because Josep belonged, was a part, Josep was a part of the international brigades, and he was a Republican volunteer. He was born in Catalonia, and he wants to convey the following ideas. I'm going to read in Catalan, and then I will translate it afterwards. I um, would like you never to forget the generosity of these thousands of people who fought in that stupid war. You should explain that to your um, sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, because um, I don't want them to suffer what I did. Um, Josep was fighting in the 35th Division, uh, especially with gun machines, and he machine guns, and he doesn't want us to forget. We should never forget the generosity of these thousand people who fought. And we should explain it to our offspring so that we never suffer again what he had to suffer. And Giuseppe is here with us in the audience today. A huge applause for him.